your tell tale sign. It is just flat out evidence that you belong to him. And he don't want those that ain't his children. Mm. My God today, whoopings don't feel good, but we ought to thank God for them. Correction don't feel good, but I hear the word said that the word of God is like a two-edged sword. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, mm. that it cuts and divides. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It might not feel good right now, but it's work working the greater good for us. I hear the word that says in Proverbs 27, 5 and 6, it says open rebuke. In other words, open correction is better than secret love. The sixth verse says faithful are the wounds of a friend. A friend will tell you the truth. A friend might tell you something and when you don't want to hear it. Glory to God, it might not, it might not feel good when it's going down, but it's a medicine that working unto the salvation of our soul. It says faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of the enemy are deceitful. That's the word. It's the ones that pat you on the back and smile in your face and don't ever tell you right from wrong. It's the ones you need to run from. But the ones that will tell you the truth, they're telling you that because they have a love for you. Because truth is correction and correction is love. Do y'all hear what God is saying? Yes. God is trying to help me He's trying to help me pastor the people that I sent you. <laughs> Correct the people when they need to be corrected that I sent you. Mm. Teach the people the whole scroll. Jesus. Because guess what? The same way that you have to go there. <coughs> the same way you, well, why do you feel like, oh my God, why do you feel like that this is not a part of your call? Did you have to sit there and get corrected? Did somebody have to chastise you? Isn't that what caused you to grow into the man of God you are today? What makes you think that they don't need the same thing? My God. So I'm going to not even ask. I'm going to pose the question to the congregation. What makes you think that you don't need the same thing? Mm. We all must be corrected. Mm. Some of them folks didn't get correction, Pastor. We gotta be corrected. Mm -hmm. So when they gotta be encounter it, they don't receive it well. Because the Bible says, my God, today, be ye holy as I, for I am holy. My God. The Bible says that Christ is coming back for a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And it is more of my responsibility than just to preach to you from week after week so you can get filled up and feel good or just go carry me over until next Sunday. No! I am supposed to keep the people of God in a place of gathering in oneness, in a fold. The Bible calls it a fold, the sheep fold. That means it's a closed-in environment and the reason it's closed in is because it's not controlled. It's not, it's, 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 it's not that. It's closed in so that you can be protected from the elements and from and from the dangers that sit outside of the fold, that sit outside of the head of the gate, that's the wolves that are surrounding you. Mm. And if correction is not a part of my call to you, then guess what? You just want to do anything. And you'll find yourself outside of the gates. Mm. Outside. My God. My God. And that's why I talked about Saul. No, I'm not perfect. But know that I am the Lord's anointed. And when you put your mouth on me, you do yourself a disservice. Because you are allowing the enemy to come in mm. and bring division. You allow the enemy to use you, whomsoever you is, or may be, to scatter the sheep. Mm -hmm. When you yourself is a sheep that must be gathered, the Bible said that he will go out and leave the 99 behind and go after the one. Let's not scatter one another. Nah, nah. Let's not 
love one another less than what we've been called by Christ to love. Mm. And let me say this, if you think that we are on the same level, you are in error. Woo! Tell the truth now. You are in error. Because there will be no need to pastor you if you've already been where I've been. Mm. If you know what I know, there's no need for me to pastor you. Mm. If you come to the level that I've come to, then there's no need for me to pastor you. Mm. God sent you here because there is something on the inside of me that must be imparted mm. into your spirit. Mm. Oh, my God, that's a to let it happen. Every person that's a part of this ministry ought to 
refuse to let that happen. Because all of us have seen what God has done in the midst of us. All of us know. You ought to know by now that your pastor is anointed. You ought to know by now that God gives me fresh now. But I am a human. And I don't have the luxury of going down to go fishing and leave you guys by yourself. We haven't gotten to that season yet. Mm -hmm. And thanks be unto God when that season comes, I'll be able to keep a fresh word hot on the press. But right now, God is filling me back up. Because it's been almost two years that I've been carrying this ministry by myself. And I thank God for each and every one of you. Don't get it wrong. I thank God for you because you did not have to be here. You did not have to submit yourself under this ministry. But now that you're here, you got to also understand that you must be submitted for real. That you got to be right for real. Mm, that's a preach now. I hope y'all are receiving this in the, in the spirit in which it is given. It's given in love. Not in some boastfulness like other pastors. No, it's in love. Because I know, and I know you all know where God wants to take us. And we are foolish if we thought or if we think that the enemy was going to sit by and let the glory of God, the way he manifests himself in this house of God, then we would be foolish to think that he wasn't going to come in and try to bring division amongst us. The thief cometh but to kill and to steal and to destroy. Yes, yes. I don't know about nobody else, but we ought to be you for your own individual selves. Wherever you are, ought to be able to be the one that say, I refuse to be the weakest link. I refuse to be the one that the enemy gave access to my pastor through. I refuse to be the one that the enemy uses to gain access to the other members through. I refuse to be the one. I hallelujah on that one. That gives the enemy access to run amok in the midst of us. Mm. The enemy desires that what we have been, that we be no more. But he is a liar and the father of all lies. And I rebuke his work and I curse it at the root and I send it back to the center in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Jesus. We shall overcome. We shall not be overtaken. We will not Thank you, Jesus. First Corinthians 3 and 2. Uh-huh. 
Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm almost done. Mm -hmm. It says, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Mm -hmm. But look over here at Hebrews 5 and 12 real quick. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews 5 and 12 says, For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, uh -huh. ye have need that one teach you again. Come on now. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. I don't mean no harm when I say I don't have people in leadership that have that 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 that, that, that maturity in leadership to be up here to help me so that I can go somewhere and get up. No, I don't mean no harm by that. It don't mean you ain't got no relationship with God. It don't mean that God don't talk to you. Come on. It just means that you have not come to that place yet. Yet. Mm. Mm-hmm. And that's the Why? Because we choose to go, me too. I ain't talking about y'all and I'm leaving myself out. Why? Because we choose to go through cycles. Mm. We are rebellious and stiff necked people. And God has shown us over and over again. The devil come, he ain't got no new trick. He just put a different face on it. And when the different face comes, you know what the end result was the last time with the last man, with the last situation, with the last time, uh -huh. or whatever it is. Uh -huh. But then now, the end You go back into that same thing, Sight. thinking it's going to be a different result, and you find yourself at a, at a brick wall again. And so, because we go through cycles and we refuse to mature, Ooh. when we are to be to the place where we are now teachers, uh -huh. where we are now eating strong meat, we have need to have milk again because we refuse to get on this cycle. We refuse. I know it ain't no shouting message. I know it's a hard word, but guess what? That's what we need sometimes. That's what we need to grow, to mature. In order for us to grow, to mature, to go to another place, to not stay stagnant. Because guess what? The truth is that you got a pastor that's preaching everything that makes you happy. You need to run as fast as you can. Because you ain't going to grow like that. You're not going to become seasoned like that. You're not going to become mature in the things of God like that. Because the Bible makes it clear. I'm almost done. The Bible makes it clear. Even when we as leaders take on the responsibility to lead God's people, we must take on the charge that we preach in season. 